Welcome to the highlights of the first T20 International between the Windies and England in the Sandals T20 International Series. The match taking place at the Darren Sammy Cricket Stadium with a pitch that looked bereft of much of the grass that we'd seen earlier for the ODIs and the Test match and looked a very good batting surface. The coin came down in favour of England's captain Owen Morgan and he elected to field first. Confirmation of the teams for the Windies with Nicholas Puran coming in as well as Fabian Allen, the left-handed spinner, come batsman. And uh, for England, well, they had a number of changes. Sam Billings, one to look forward to as well as Tom Curran, Liam Plunkett fit again to play. Chris Jordan coming back in for his speciality. We'll go straight now to the top of the action. Well, stop what you're doing and strap yourselves in for three and a half hours of T20 entertainment. The universe boss struts out to the middle. Well, what does he have in store for us today? He has been in simply scintillating form throughout the ODI series. Great to have him back playing international cricket. Now we have him in international T20 cricket. Different partner for him today. Campbell misses out. And he is going to be partnered by Shay Hope. There he is, 57 matches, 1,607 runs. You look at 30s and 50s in this format in particular, but it's all about the strike rate 143. It's a ground as well that the England bowlers really struggle just to keep a leash on the universe boss in particular. David Willey gets his first run out in this, well, this series, but also didn't play in the ODIs. So it's a good opportunity for him. Struggle with an illness in the middle of the series, the 50 over series. Chris Jordan next to him, very much a T20 specialist, been playing out in the Pakistan Super League. We've had a number of the new recruits into this England side. Well, we're going to get underway. Well, boundary first ball. They're underway. Good afternoon, Ian. Hello, Robert. A little bit of, I think a little bit of movement back into Shea Hope, but when you've got a short fine leg, David Willey, you've got to start it just outside the off stump, obviously got two straight. Best possible start though, well, six would have been there. <laughs> yeah, but you take that. Oh, big shot this time, third man interested. All oh, dropped, Adil Rashid right on the fence. did everything right. He positioned himself, did Adil Rashid. He got a solid base standing near that boundary, which would have been a concern in his peripheral vision initially. Yeah, you see the base. Too easy. The right leg wasn't touching the rope, I don't think. Leading edge, that's gone straight up, won't even beat the inner circle. Joe Root takes the catch. Oh, what do you know? There is still some bounce in the surface. Maybe the ball just didn't angle towards leg stump as much as Shea Hope expected because he closed the face of the bat too early. But a good strike by Curran. <laughs> and a wonderful celebration from Joe Root. So Adil Rashid will be breathing a sigh of relief having dropped Shea Hope in the first over. Hope goes for six, seven for one. Oh, 
Well, we have one of those moments I've been looking forward to. Hetmar and Gale in at the crease together. Two left-handers, both at different ends of their career, but equally as exciting. And just nine matches, 77 runs. Not yet a 30 or a 50, but the strike rate, that will go up. Well, this man has some real swagger. That is the first maximum straight down the ground. 13 for one. Well, if there is an element of surprise, that would have surprised Tom Curran. Because given the problems he had, Shimron Hetmeyer in the ball, putting into his thigh pad, taking the leading edge, previous deliveries, to smack this away so confidently, typically West Indian. Well, that's just too easy. The field set as it is, short, wide, third man up, just to slip in as well. One of the most simple boundaries for Chris Gale. And Chris goes past Martin Gupton now as the player to have hit more sixes in T20 internationals than any other. 104 now to Giel. Chipped into the leg side. Nothing more than just a flick. But another maximum for Chris Gale. Three overs done, 28 for one. Such a strong man. And that's hit the inner half of the bat. That's not out of the screws. The way the Wendy's have made history in this format of the green with their six hitting, not the running. Oh, God, excellent over. Chris Gale thinks that it might have been a bump ball, but he's just squeezed it straight to the man who's up in the circle. Well, that is a big wicket. Excellent start from Chris Jordan, showing all his skill. All his experience, all the nafs against Chris Gow. We're just going to have a look. Looks like he just guides it. Adil Rashid this time doesn't make a mistake. Uh, he's practiced these Yorkers assiduously before the match. Full and wide to Gale. 15 to him, 31 for two. still at the other end but England will be mighty relieved having seen the back of Chris Gale early for the first time in the last couple of weeks not with the control that he would like but he will uh, get another boundary just a little too short they'll enjoy bowling short on this pitch just get some steep bounce no, he hasn't forgotten holding up oh hit my in the the ODI similar delivery he'd hit the first one for a boundary and went after the second and hold out at backward square leg it's gone up a long way and is taken very simply by liam plunkett just mixing it up almost surprised really it was a uh, knee-high full toss and just couldn't get the control they perhaps yeah they're gonna have a little look just have a little look on height maybe Meyer is being I think just told to stick around for a little longer just check on the height here he was certainly fooled by that one he didn't get a chance to get that big arm swing in
slower delivery into the shot bit too early didn't really get any back speed behind it and I just popped it up to mid on and uh, umpire's initial decision confirmed third wicket down for the West Indies Shimron Hetmeyer just popping this one up to mid on simple catch in the end for Plunkett that might have been a better ploy but he's gone for 14 West Indies now 37 for 3 Because poor run, 37 for three. A few early problems here for the West Indies. This time just a fraction too short. Not even Sam Billings could cut that one off in the deep. So uh, a boundary to finish the over. Still six from it though, 43 for three. Good boundary, it's all the bear store. What is it, arm, glove, bounce? Oh, lungs. That's the extra bounce I was talking about earlier. William Plunkett. Can afford to be a little further up than the others and get that kind of bounce because of his height. in the slot that's gone all the way right into the changing rooms just trying to adjust his line Liam Plunkett and over pitches right in the slot he's gone for a Yorker and it's a cross seam and he's missed it by about a foot Right in the slot. Pulled away a leg side fielder out there. Can't get there. It bounces. Oh, it's wonderful stuff. I don't know whether he stopped it or they've stopped it. Hitting with the spin. It's Billings. Very acrobatic. 67 for three. Stop this. This is a good piece of work. It's in the air. He's in the air. He's may just have had that right foot down. Stapler, Stapler. Willie's interested. Not now, he's not. Well, this is the way Nicholas Puran plays. Very aggressive. Hits the ball hard. This one is just floated up into his range. Just over Jordan. He's got a scamper for this. Oh, he's just over for six. It looked more like a cough than a than a clean hit. But just kept travelling. Short again. Hey, could we have the ball back, please, when it lands? 90 for three. 50 partnership comes up for these two. Darren Bravo was ready for that one. And up she goes. Lovely strike down the ground. Just open the front leg so he can access the ball with the back. Perfect start to the over then. Yeah, just the way that he manipulates his wrists. Mid-off is up. They're just going to check this now. I think that's just short, so that's only going to be four. Just see it pitch and just check over the cushion. 
What a brilliant effort. What an amazing effort from Chris Jordan. Well, the skill of the delivery, bowled a slow ball into the surface, really did him. Bravo was so early on the shot, just chipped it up, then he had to get across. You can see him roll his fingers across the top of the ball, completely does Bravo. But then that is excellent, had to change direction, move across to his right, sticks out a hand, good catch. A bit of captaincy as well from Owen Morgan. Could have just left Jordan to bowl his two right at the end, brought him back earlier than they might have thought. Bravo goes for 28, 101 for four. And given, yeah, good catch from Johnny Bairstow. It's a little quicker through the air this time. Big Carlos Brathwaite goes for a duck. It's an outstanding passage of play from Adil Rashid in particular. Real pace off, pace off, and then this one pushed through that little bit quicker. Just skids off the surface as it comes out of the front of Rashid's hand and off the edge of Brathwaite's bat. A man at the top of his game with a lot of confidence. Not Brathwaite's day so far with the bat. He goes for naught, 102 for five. Captain's happy, bowler is happy. England pretty happy, 102 for five. Fabian Allen. Brilliant, simply brilliant from Nicholas Puran. He has every shot in the book, and he is some talent. Well, he's found one there. That's outrageous. Young lad, no fear. Keep your eye on the ball and whack. Sensible too, hit with the wind. Catch it's a cry, catch it's a cry, run out of room. He has run out of room on the boundary line. Fabian Allen. These are good runs for the Windies. Couple of maximums. It's got to be Sam Billings out there. He's really interested in this at deep mid wicket. Jordan Vistan, he doesn't drop many, he doesn't drop any, and holds on to that one. Just a gamble from Morgan. Single, six, single, six, wicket. Fielded very well. Blemish early on from Rashid, but it didn't matter. Shea Hawk perishing shortly afterwards. Right at the bottom of the bat, it looks as if it's going to die on Chris Jordan, but he's got a wonderful pair of hands. Needed that wicket. Alan goes for eight, it's 127 for six. Ready, lads. Go on. That'll be 54, CJ. Nicholas Puran, only a second in this format of the game. But it's a nice glimpse of his ability as a player. 50 from 32 deliveries with three fours and three sixes. Crowd stands in appreciation. It's an excellent innings. That's gone. That has gone some distance. He picked the length out of that. Nicholas Puran. That's out of here. Just check this. That stand is a big stand, it's got a big roof. Back of the hand stuff, gets his front leg out of the way. Look at his arms flaying through the line of the ball. This goes a long way. Oh, he goes full and straight and knocks over Nicholas Puran. What a comeback for Tom Curran. Well, it's been a terrific contest. Peran going at England. A six in this over. 
and he's looking at the big screen. It's just a genuine length ball, and it's through him quickly. 137k, ball straight. You miss, I hit. Third wicket for Tom Curran. Bowlers have to rise to the challenge. He does. But a wonderful innings from Nicholas Perrin. 58 from 37, 137 for seven. That's unfortunate from Tom Curran. And it's a bonus for the win, this is that. And it's really good from the two batsmen. They put him under pressure there. They were looking for two. That's unfortunate. It's as good as you can serve up as far as the Yorker is concerned pay the penalty 150 up for the Windies he'll be thinking there ain't no justice squeeze off the inside edge now pace on and four innovation from nurse should have been a slowy <laughs> runs and that's the thing that that you have to look at with there's the value that he can offer with the bat catch taken went for the yorker it was a, a low full toss in the end but he had the protection down the ground good running catch and it's anyone's game 160 for eight the windies end up off their 20 overs Where's your money? Lawful toss right at the bottom of the bat from Jason Holder. Sam Billings makes no mistake. The wicked dot ball ends the Windies innings. 160 for eight. Holder seven. It's a worker. 58 runs came off the last five overs of the innings. Curran has been brilliant, four for 36 off his four overs. Little bit of an eye-opener that Jordan wasn't able to bowl his full quota. Best figures, though, in T20 internationals for Tom Curran. Do you know, I reckon both teams will be happy here. You're just looking at England going off the field. Lots of congratulations around. And the Windies have worked hard to get to 160. Perran with a, a wonderful innings, but you can just tell body language, England fancy this. The Windies finished on 160 for eight. They lost wickets regularly throughout that innings, but thanks in the main to Perran's 58 from just 37 deliveries, and he had a half-century partnership with Darren Bravo, who got 28. It seemed still to be a competitive score. Tom Curran was very, very good, bowling at different phases, and his best figures in T20 internationals, four for 36. But not to be outdone, Jordan, excellent. Rashid, brilliant. And Denley chipped in with a wicket, too. It meant that England would need 161 of their 20 overs to try to go one up in this series. Well, it's a different batting lineup from what we saw in the ODIs, but we have Alex Hales, vastly experienced opening batsman in white ball cricket in particular. And as we saw throughout the ODIs, Sheldon Cottrell, the man with the salute. Will we see that in this innings? West Indies will be looking to strike early in this power play, just as England did. Three wickets. Oh, short, tested him out early. 
He answers the question well. Normally pitches up the ball early on Sheldon Cottrell, but this was pitching in his half of the pitch. And Alex Hills is not going to miss out on those. England off to a good start with a six. Yeah, they would have had a good think about that last ODI. Think about how they combat that extra bounce. Same again, not as convincing, but four. England get off to a decent start here. This score can look extremely gettable. And I'm sure they'll settle for that. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of pressure on the opening pair in particular. Oh, it's going to be more runs, whether this time it's off the pad. Cottrell just hasn't found a line. He's been far too straight. As he actually hasn't been straight, he's been more to leg than anything else. Did all the hard work, did Brathwaite. Looked like he was going to cling on, but it just spilled out at the last moment. Well, he covered the ground and got a hold of it. Alex well, Hills didn't quite get that one in the middle of the bat. And all the way there, it's in. And... Just out of his fist as his hand hit the ground. Bowled him, full straight, and there it is, the salute. Well, it took him a while, but he finally got it right. Sheldon Cottrell put one where he should have been looking to put them from the get-go immediately success that one just came back slightly heels opened up to whack it over the offside and has to accept a salute on his way back to the pavilion Hells goes for 11 17 for one Joe Root gets an opportunity to see what he's got in this format now. Oh, easy runs again. Again, just sliding down that leg side, just a clip from Bearstow. Oh, things have started awfully wrong for the West Indies. Same again, that is timed really well. Not sure what Hepmeyer was doing, he looked like he went the wrong way, but he was a lot finer for that ball. That was just a regulation clip off his legs. Jason Holder is not happy. Oh, it's just a carbon copy. This is far too easy for Bairstow, far too easy for England. Oh, the, the length's wrong, the line's wrong. And just free runs. Shimron Hetmeyer has just been running to his left and running to his right to, to <laughs> retrieve the ball down that fine leg. He's tired, Hetmeyer. 
tackle goes right across his stumps. It's not a bad shell. Oh, whether Root will just have a look at this one. The salute comes, Joe Root. Yeah, he reviews it. Is there anything on Ultra Edge? Oh, it looked to me as if he'd been struck in front. Went way across his stumps. Field decision is out. Is that what has saved him? This is the one. Oh, it clips the top of the veil, so that is umpire's call, and Joe Root is out. Joe Root goes without scoring England 32 for two. Captain Owen Morgan in at number four. Get it! Edge. Done him in the flight, done him with the pace as well. Go on, Chris Gow. No. Nearly. Again, Bear's still making width for himself. No one down there. Nothing more than a flick. Downwind as well. This has not been anything like the over that Jason Holder and Nurse would have wanted. 14 from it, 47 for two. There's Drips. Right into his arc, Johnny Bairstow. Doesn't try to hit it too square. Just hits it so it rides the wind enough to go for six. Slapped. Move on to 50. He might have punched it for four. Seven overs. That's it, the boundary, surely. 68 for two. Good old-fashioned left boot, but uh, not quite enough. Just rolled on there, looked like it anyway. Just rolled on to the cushion. Four. That's another good shot from Johnny Bairstow all the way for six. It's a 50 as well, and it's coming very quick time. Just 27 deliveries for him. seen hints of his good form throughout the series Johnny Bairstow and it's all coming together easily done rough with round the wicket to into the body of Morgan who's been staying leg side of the ball and as easy as you like for Chris Gale Not in, in any control, his feet were off the ground, couldn't couldn't get the power, couldn't get the timing, probably got it high on the bat. Going Morgan. And the wicket today, Weston is desperately needed. The catcher Chris Gale, Carlos Brathwaite, the bowlers and Morgan. Ian Morgan goes for it. England now 83 for three. 
Joe Denley is the new man. Bowl a couple of tidy overs of leg spin. Just 40 runs in seven innings so far, but domestically he's been a force to reckon with in all formats. It's gone high. <laughs> Should be taken. Dropped it. It's the third one that has gone down by the Whitney's in the field here today or tonight. What can you say? Fielding is such an important part of this game. That should be four. Easily passed. Backward point. Uh, it's just a wide full toss and put away. Those are easy deliveries. Those are two gifts wrapped in a bow tie and saying Merry Christmas from Carlos Brathwaite in this over. Let's see what he's trying to do. He's trying to bowl wide and full, but just over pitching. Once it passes the man at backward point, there's no one to stop it. high does it have the legs Carlos Brathwaite is under it and takes it and the wicket that the wind is desperately needed because it is that man Johnny Bairstow Ashley Nurse finally strikes and entertaining classy innings from Johnny Bairstow comes to an end didn't quite have the legs to clear the boundary, and Carlos Bradsweight did everything right on that occasion. It's for Ashley Nurse, Johnny Bairstow, 68 in just 40, England 103 for four. Get him! Lovely shot, super shot, just a little over pitched and pounced on. That's all that's needed. England don't need to panic at all. Bit of width on offer this time. Put away nicely. Slow outfield. That's been hit well. Confident looking shot. Excellent shot. Finds the gap. Just as the pressure starts to build, you get that release. Couple of steps down, pick the gap really well. Didn't think too much about ele elevation, actually just tried to get it in that gap. Long on, deep mid-wicket, splits them. Hit powerfully, again finds the gap and finds the boundary. This is outstanding from Joe Denley. Cultural should have just worked out from the ball before. He's just looking to hang leg side. So anything left wide of that off stump, he was looking for that option. And he's just put it exactly where he wanted the ball. Then he can use the pace that Cottrell is putting on it. They'll push and they'll push and it's more poor fielding and it's frustration for Cottrell. Not been a good day in the field for the Windies, 133 for four. Really looked away thinking that was just a single down to third man and looked up and... Well, that's just very, very poor to say the least, really. Didn't get anything behind it, just got to make sure. Cottrell is not impressed. Flat-batted it. 
Not quite the middle of the bat, but it's uh, enough. Just goes for the tennis smash. I don't think he even looked at the ball then, Joe Denley. Hit him high on the bat. Didn't matter because these two men were up. Just takes a bit of pace as it hits the slow outfield as well. Not hit it that well. Yeah. Plan has come to fruition for Jason Holder. Nicholas Puran takes the catch quite easily. It's in against the breeze. Jason Holder persisting with that short ball. Back of the length. Denley looking for a maximum, doesn't really get all of it. The catch sticks. Maybe a little too late. Denley, 30 from 29. 153 for five. Could it be another one? Could it be another one? Oh, dropped it, another one. Oh, Shane Thomas, I'm not sure why he only went with his left hand. Oh, dear. That would have been interesting. Short ball works again. Sam Billings this time, hitting into the breeze. Oh, he's just gone one-handed. Catch it now, catch it. Down it goes. I think it's just the fact that he didn't really, or he wasn't aware as to where the boundary was. Could have gone with two hands. Another one. My goodness, could there be a surprise left here for us? Salute, sir. England just faltering. Cottrell back into the attack. He's got three for again. It's a slower delivery. How slow? Just a cutter. It's the top of off. Here he goes. A ball of deception. Is there a twist? Sam Billings, 18, 154 for six. And that's the game. Nice workmanlike victory for England in this opening T20 International. And built on the back of the bowlers and Bierstow's half century, and England win by four wickets. Flurry shirts are happy. The three matches, first one goes to England. England winning the toss and electing to bowl first. Just a little stutter at the end there, but... 18.5 overs. England have knocked them off. Handshakes are all round. Windies can do better, they can feel better, they can bowl better. Wasn't bad, 160. Worked hard to get to 160. Is that trudge off when you lose? A word of commiseration. Think about the next game. So England got to their target with seven deliveries to spare. They finished on 161 for six. Johnny Bairstow was the star of the innings with a 68 from just 40 deliveries. There was also a nice little partnership between Denley and Billings. 30 to Denley and 18 to Sam Billings. The Windies weren't at their best. They dropped a number of catches. The ground feeling was poor. And once Cottrell found his radar, he caused some problems, finishing with three for 29. There were wickets as well for Ashley Nurse, Jason Holder, and Carlos Brathwaite.
but the player of the match, the man who had the most impact on the outcome was uh, Johnny Biesto with his half century. Just confirmation of how the match flowed after Morgan won the toss and asked the Windies to bat the Windies 160 for eight on the back of Puran's half century. And then England getting home 161 for six and winning by four wickets. We hope that you've enjoyed all the highlights from this opening encounter and look forward to your company next time. From St. Lucia, bye for now.